A very pleasant morning to my Word to the Nation friends and family. The theme of my sermon this morning, the called and the chosen, ensuring your place among the chosen few. Scripture reading comes from St. Matthew 22 verse 14. It says, For many are called, but few are chosen. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus provides a striking statement that has intrigued and challenged believers for centuries. For many are called, but few are chosen. This verse invites us to dig deeper into our understanding of God's calling and election. What does it mean to be called and what does it mean to be chosen? Today we will explore the distinction between the called and the chosen and discover how we can ensure that we are numbered among the chosen few. I make three points. My first point, the universal call, God's invitation to all. The term called refers to the universal invitation that God extends to all humanity. Through the gospel, God calls everyone to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. This call is a demonstration of God's love and desire for all to come to salvation. Consider a banquet where the host sends out invitations to everyone in the city. The invitation is open and all are welcome to attend. Similarly, God's call is extended to everyone without discrimination. We are all recipients of this call. Romans 10.13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This means that we have the opportunity to respond to God's invitation. The first step is to recognize and accept God's call through faith in Jesus Christ. My second point, the chosen, God's elect and their characteristics. While many are called, the chosen are those who respond to God's call with genuine faith and obedience. The chosen are often referred to as the elect in scripture, those who have been predestined by God to receive salvation. Imagine the same banquet where the host, after sending out the invitations, wait to see who will actually come. Among the many invited, only a few respond and attend. These attendees represent the chosen ones who have accepted the invitation and honored the host by their presence. Being chosen involves more than merely hearing God's call. It requires a heartfelt response. Ephesians 1, 4 and 5 reminds us, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. We must live a manner worthy of our calling, embracing holiness and obedience to God. My third point, 
ensuring our place among the chosen practical steps to ensure we are among the chosen we must actively live out our faith this involves a continuous commitment to spiritual growth obedience and service consider an athlete who is invited to join a prestigious sports team the invitation alone does not secure their place on the team they must train practice and demonstrate their skills consistently to remain part of the team similarly our spiritual journey requires diligence and perseverance Peter provides practical advice in 2 Peter 1 10 and 11 therefore my brothers and sisters make every effort to confirm your calling and election for if you do these things you will never stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we confirm our calling and election by first of all growing in virtue second peter 1 5 to 7 says for this very reason make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness goodness with knowledge knowledge with self-control self-control with endurance endurance with godliness godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love we therefore need to make sure that we have these qualities goodness knowledge self-control perseverance godliness mutual affection and love the second way of confirming or calling and election is through self-examination second corinthians 13 5 says test yourselves to see if you are in the faith examine yourselves or do you yourselves not recognize that jesus christ is in you unless you fail the test we need to therefore have assess ourselves regularly to ensure we are walking in alignment with god's will the third and final way we can confirm our calling and election is by persevering in faith james 1 verse 12 reminds us blessed is the one who endures trials because when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life that god has promised to those who love him we therefore need to remain steadfast in our commitment to christ even in the face of trials and challenges today i invite each of us to reflect on our spiritual journey are we merely called or are we living as the chosen let us heed the words of jesus in matthew 7 21 not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven respond to god's call with a sincere heart live out your faith with integrity and make every effort to confirm your calling and election as we do so we will be assured of a place among the chosen few and receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ amen
Many are called, but few are chosen. That saying is that many people have had talents and gifts that are similar to yours, and they were called to do a job, a task. They were called to make a difference. But a call is nothing more than an interview. It is the opportunity for you to say, why do you desire, where will you be in five years? And if you give road answers, if you just give stamp, if you just respond like everyone else, you will never be chosen. You see, chosen is a destiny. Chosen is when you walk into what you were born for. It's when you know that this was my purpose. Chosen. And when it's your purpose, you can't run from it, you can't hide from it. It calls for you. stirring on the inside. It calls, it calls, it calls. Your purpose is trying to tell you. The thing that is going around in your head is inspired by God and it is so that you can do something hard, hard, hard difficult, difficult, challenging that the world has never seen. Put you a notepad beside the bed and begin to write that down. Write that down. Write that down. giving you a vision, he's giving you a phrase, he's giving you a book, he's giving you a look, he's giving you something so that you can leave some kind of resume on the earth that proved that you were called and chosen. You see, your obituary and my obituary will only give highlights of when you were born what you did as a child, or it will leave what you did in the lives of others. It will leave a story that others can tell. It's time for you to give this thing all you got. Show them what it looks like. Show them what it looks like to be called. Show them what it looks like to be chosen. Show them what it looks like. What it looks like to stand at the end of life. similar to yours, and they were called to do a job, a task, they were called to make a difference. Show them what it looks like. A call is nothing more than an interview. It is the opportunity for you to say, why do you desire, where will you be in five years? And if you give road answers, if you just give standards, you just respond like everyone else. You'll never be chosen. You see, chosen is a destiny. Chosen is when you walk into what you were born for. It's when you know that this was my purpose. Chosen. And when it's your purpose, you can't run from it, you can't hide from it. It calls for you. Many are called, but few are chosen. Thank you for joining us today for a Word to the Nation broadcast, B224. This is your brother and friend, Carol Wilson, saying, Have a happy Sabbath, a fantastic day, and may the God of heaven bless you real good. Peace and love to you all.